Open your Bibles with me again to the book of Philippians. This time we are in chapter number three, verses one, two, and verse number three. And this morning, as believers, we do not have a contract, we have a covenant. Philippians at chapter three. Verses 1, 2, and verse number 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, is indeed not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Thank you. You may be seated. May the Lord sanctify the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. We Shouted before I started preaching. That's the way church used to sound when I was a boy. They would start shouting even before the sermon was coming in. For the scripture reading is enough to shout about. That, that word kind of preaches itself. Have no confidence in your flesh. We don't have a contract. We have a covenant. To illustrate the importance and the significance that God attaches to covenant, when you read Genesis at chapter 9, the rainbow is God's promise, is God's covenant with Noah that the earth will never again be destroyed by water. When you read Genesis at chapter number 13, God made a covenant with Abraham. He told Abraham, for all the land that you can see, I will give it to you and your seed forever. A covenant is not a contract. A contract is an agreement that one or both parties can break and walk away from. But a covenant is an agreement that is binding for as long as the initiator of the covenant lives. Since all the covenants in the Bible originate with God, then they will last forever. The covenant that God made with Noah will last forever. The covenant that God made with Abraham will last forever. The covenant that God made with David will last forever. The new covenant in his blood through the death of Jesus Christ will last forever. When you have a contract, one or both parties can break away from it. Uh, you would be like um, Kareem Hunt, uh, who played as running back for the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, he pushed his girlfriend down the other day. Uh, and they broke his contract. Um, or you could be like um, Carmelo Anthony, who played 10 games with the Rockets, and when they got tired of him, his contract is up. Uh, we don't have a contract, believers. We have a covenant that no matter what happens, the initiator of the covenant says, who I hold in my hand. I wish I had a Bible reader. The devil in hell can't pluck him out. Nothing will ever happen to abrogate our covenant. God made a promise, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And that promise is not only applicable for now. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. For centuries, the Jews were the covenant people of God. Yet when their long-awaited Messiah came to them, 
they rejected him. The Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 11 and 12 says, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. As a result, God initiated a new and everlasting covenant. The problems that the Philippians were facing in this text, it seems, was that certain Judaizers were trying to force the Gentile Christians to fit into a Jewish mold before they could become Christians. They were trying to make them Jews in order for them to become Christians. But I want you to see this morning that we have a status in Christ Jesus as believers. The false teachings of the Judaizers was an attempt at a mixture of law and grace that did nothing but confuse and deceive those who were enslaved. As believers, we are free from the statutes of men and the bondage of religious legalism. If we are in Christ, Then John chapter 8 verse 36 says, if the Son has made you free, you are free indeed. Paul first describes these false teachers as dogs. Dogs. Uh, Not like the little pets that you have in your house or, or the little house pets that you buy at the pet shop. This word refers to wild savages that plagued ancient cities in that day. These dogs roamed in packs, feeding on garbage and occasionally attacking people. They were despised and and the word dog, the name dog, was frequently used as a derogatory term. In fact, Jews commonly referred contemptuously to Gentiles as uncircumcised dogs. Anybody who is teaching against Jesus Christ, Paul says, is a dog. A ravenous, scavenging dog. Now Paul's words seem harsh and unloving in today's culture of tolerance and diversity. Even many in the church, perhaps here at Lily Grove, consider it unloving and divisive to point out doctrinal error. Uh, Yet, truth and love can live under the same roof. Scripture teaches that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, and anybody who teaches that Jesus is not the only way to God is a ravenous, savage dog. See how quiet you're getting right there? Because you want to tolerate everything that's ungodly and, 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 and you want to go along with everything that's unchristian. But Jesus is not a way. He is the way. Jesus is not a part of the truth. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is not somebody you add to your life to make your life a little better. Jesus is life itself. I, 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 mentioned, I mentioned to the people who were here in the early service that I, um, I passed by the Zumba class in the gym one day. I, I, I didn't go in. I just passed by the Zumba class. And uh, they had this little, this little jingle that they were dancing to, that they were exercising to. Uh, I forgot the person who wrote it, but it says something like, I need a, a little more Jesus. And uh, I, I didn't go in, I was just passing by. Uh, but I said to them, I don't want to hear that song at this church anymore. Because I don't need a little more Jesus. Uh, Jesus needs a little more of me. But I don't need a little more Jesus. I need all of Jesus. And when I get all of Jesus, sooner or later, he's going to get all of me. And the problem with many of us is that we want a little Jesus. Uh, We want Jesus in this part of our life, but we don't want Jesus in that part of our life. And if Jesus is not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. 
I wish I had a witness here. If you are not saying that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and salvation is by grace alone and faith alone, you are a ravenous, savage dog. Yes, I said it. I do not apologize for I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God under salvation. I believe, and what I believe, the Jehovah's Witnesses can't make me hide in the closet when they ring my doorbell. I wish I had somebody to talk back to me here. The Seventh-day Adventists can't make me believe anything that's not in the Bible. Uh, the Muslims can't shake me and take me away from what I believe. I believe he was born of a virgin. I believe he healed the sick. I believe he raised the dead. I believe he gave sight to the blind. I believe he made the lame walk. I believe he died one Friday. I believe he rose early one Sunday morning. I believe he's seated on the right hand of God with power. I believe he's coming back again. And everybody who does not teach that is a ravenous, savage dog. Stop letting people make you be embarrassed to be a Christian. Uh, stop making people make you blush and be ashamed because you go to Bible study. Because you read the scripture. I said last Sunday, a whole lot of people like to say, I don't argue the Bible. The reason you don't argue the Bible is because you don't know it. Perhaps if you picked it up and read it and uh, take your marriage license out of it. Oh. Uh, and your birth certificate uh, and, and the money you're saving for a rainy day come on help me preach if you can we put everything in the Bible except putting our face in there and reading it and the reason you can't discuss it is because you don't know it Peter said be ready always I wish I had a Bible reader right there to give a reason for the hope that is in you you ought to be able to wake a Christian up at 4 o'clock in the morning and I can tell you what I believe. If anybody does not teach or preach in that name, they are ravenous, savage dogs. As a believer, I know what my status is in Christ Jesus. Beware of dogs. Beware of evildoers. Beware of of the circumcision. Beware of people who try to make you into something else that they haven't become themselves. Uh, stop, stop letting these folk uh, put these designations on you and tell you what you got to do and how you got to dress and how you got to eat and all that kind of nonsense to make you Christian. Peter had that problem. Uh, Peter was, was, was at the home of Cornelius and uh, God was getting ready to save the Gentiles and and Peter, God let down an apron, a, 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 a basket of food. And uh, it was all kinds of delicacies, all kinds of meats. And, and Peter said, we, we don't eat that because we are Jews. That's not according to our dietary laws. We don't eat this kind of stuff. And, and God said, don't call anything I've made unclean. Uh, it's not what goes into the body that defiles it. It's what comes out. I wish I had a witness here. You can wear a long dress all you want if your heart is not right. Have I got a witness here? You cannot wear makeup all you want. If your heart is not circumcised, it matters not what you wear, it's what you are on the inside. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are, are become new. It's not a sign that you're spiritual because you look broke. It's not a sign that you love God because you don't wear stockings and, 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 and you got one brown sock and one black one. And, and you know, by and by when the morning comes, the Lord's going, no, I, I want some stuff right now. And, and if you don't want it, I want your stuff. Uh, God has made some promises to us right now 
He satisfies our mouths with good things. I wish I had a witness here. God is blessing right now. God is making a way. I'm enjoying eternal life right now. I'm not waiting to die to enjoy eternal life. I want to enjoy it right now in my status as a believer. As a hurry, brothers and sisters, Paul in that same text not only talks about our status as believers, he talks about our standard of worship. Ours is not a worship based in fleshly ritual. Fleshly ritual. Um, there was a, a Lutheran church in Denmark years ago when the Protestant Reformation just started. There was this Lutheran church that the people went in the church every week and they turned to the wall and they bowed their head and went to their seat. For years and years, people looked at that wall, bowed their heads, and went to their seats. And some years later, somebody asked them why they were doing that. And um, they found out that the church used to be a Catholic church. And there was a mural of the Virgin Mary on the wall. And Catholics would come in and bow before the Virgin Mary and go to their seat. But the church is now a Lutheran church, a Protestant church, and the wall has been painted over white. But people still look at that wall and bow down to it because it used to be a mural of the Virgin Mary. People just bowed at the wall for no reason other than they saw somebody else do it. And they did it for years and years and years until they realized that it didn't make sense to bow to a wall for no reason. My sister who lives in Alaska when she first got married, uh, she cooked a ham one time and she cut off both ends of the ham. And uh, her husband, Francis, asked her, why did she cut off both ends of the ham? And she said, I, I saw my mama do that. And so she called my mama and said, Mommy, how come you cut off both ends of your ham? She said, because my pot was small. <laughs> ain't nothing spiritual about it. Ain't nothing. Don't make the ham taste no better. I just had a small pot and I cut off both ends of it. Somebody ought to help me preach it. You raise your hands because you see somebody else raise their hand. You sing because everybody else is singing. Worship ought to come from a heart that has been purely converted to the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I don't have to watch you worship in order for me to get excited about what God is up to in my life. When I look in the rearview mirror of my own life and see how many doors God has opened for me, how many prayers God has answered for me. How many ways God has answered for me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, my heart just overflows in worship from my own testimony. Uh, it ought to flow out of a genuine heart of praise and thanksgiving. I don't need a choir director to tell me to give God some praise. I don't need a praise leader to say, let's give God a hand of praise. For about 30 minutes, you clap in and, and, and you got to have 30 minutes worth of praise and all of that. No, no, I don't need you to choreograph and manage my praise. Matter of fact, that's insulting for you to tell me how to praise God. Uh, some people cry when they praise. Some people holler out like, 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 like Brother Miller did just a minute ago. Some folk clap their hands. Some people stand when they praise. Don't, don't tell me how to give God praise because you don't know what I've been through. And, and if you don't want to praise him, if you don't want to show any emotion, that's you. But, but don't put that moniker on me. Uh, because God's been so good to me that I don't want anybody to try to stifle and hush my praise. I see you. I see you. Trying to be all dignified and, and act all cute. Uh, when, uh, when the cowboys beat my saints the other night, I was screaming at the television. 
I cuss Drew Brees and, and all the saints. Ten and one, let the sorry cowgirls who are six and five beat my saints. And I'm hollering at the TV and I ain't getting a dime from the saints or the cowboys. Now, if I can act a fool over a football game, who woke me up this morning? Who, who put food on my table? Who made my enemies leave me alone? Who healed me when I was sick? Who satisfies my mouth with good things? Let everything, let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You wanna you, you wanna you wanna know how you ought to worship? I, I got one or two more things written down here, but let me cut across the field. That's 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 preacher talk for hurrying up. Uh, let me let me cut across the field here and show you. Uh, how to worship. Uh, when you read the Gospel of John, there's a woman at the well. Uh, and she comes to the well at noonday. Because she don't want to be around these church women who talking about her because she's been married five times. Uh, it's some mean people come to church. It's some gossiping folk come to church. Don't let them little things on their head fool you on the first Sunday. Don't, don't, don't let these little choir rolls make you think they all of that. She came when I've, all the church folk, all the mission sisters were gone. She came at noonday and when she came, Jesus was in the shade of Jacob's well. And Jesus said, give me something to drink. And the woman said, sir, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria. You know that the Jews and the Samaritans have no dealing. I wish I had a Bible reader. Jesus said, if you knew who I was, if you knew who was asking you for a drink, you would ask me for a drink and I would give you living water. Come on, help me preach a minute. She said, sir, this well is deep and you don't have anything to draw with. Jesus said, whoever comes to this well is going to get thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give him, there will be a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Have I got a witness? The woman says, sir, give me this water. Jesus said, go call your husband. The woman said, I had five husbands. Jesus said, you're right. You, you have no husband. You've had five. And the one you're shacking up with is not your husband. I need two or three more Bible readers. The woman says, sir, you must be a prophet. Because no man would know these things except God be with him. Then she tried to change the subject. She said, our, our father said we ought to worship on Mount Gerizim. And the Jews say we ought to worship on Mount Zion. Jesus said the hour is coming and that hour is here where you ought not worship either on Mount Gerizim or on Mount Zion. For God is a spirit. And they that would worship him must seek to worship him in spirit and in truth. You're going to help me close this, won't you? The Bible said that a woman dropped her water pot. The thing that was weighing her down, she dropped it at the well, ran into the village, and said, come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Is not this man Christ? I I'm not through with the story yet. The Bible says the villagers came to where Jesus was, and they heard Jesus preach. And after they heard Jesus preach, they went and found that woman from the well and said, now we believe. Not because of what you say, but because we have heard him for ourselves. 
And brothers and sisters, you can't worship God until you know him for yourself. He can be your mother's God. He can be your father's God. He can be your grandmother's God, but you can't worship him like you ought to worship until you know him for yourself. I need somebody here who knows for yourself that it is nobody like Jesus. There is nobody nowhere like Jesus. I need somebody here who has tried all kinds of things. You've tried drugs. You've tried relationships. You've tried alcohol. You've tried graduating from school. You've tried making money. All of those things satisfy momentarily. But I need one or two witnesses in here who can help me testify that there's nothing that satisfies like a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus in the morning. Jesus at noonday. Jesus late in the evening. Jesus in the midnight hour. There's still power in that name. There's still joy in that name. Somebody can be saved this morning. All you've got to do is call on that name. Because there's medicine in the hem of his garment. There's medicine in his saliva. There's medicine in his healing touch. If you call the name of Jesus, the Bible says he will save to the utmost. Now, I don't have to hear that name too many times before my soul gets happy. When I stop thinking about where I came from. And I need one or two people here to help me to testify that there's nothing in my background that says I ought to be as blessed as I am this morning. Not how I was raised, not where I was born, not who my parents were, nothing in my background says I ought to be as blessed as I am right now. God's been good to me. I'm not talking about material things now because you can lose that stuff in the morning. You can go back home and your house be burned down to the ground. Somebody could steal your car outside. You could show up at work tomorrow and be given a pink slip and don't have a job. But somebody ought to help me testify this morning when I didn't have those things, God was still good to me. I've been young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread God will make a way for you I wish I had a witness here God will make a way out of no way but you got to learn how to worship him if you got to worship by yourself don't worry about who's sitting next to you don't worry about them talking about you after church God's been so good to you if you're the only one on your pew, if you're the only one in your section, if you're the only one in your row, go ahead and give God your best praise. When I was sick, he healed me. When I was broke, he made a way for me. When I was lost, he came and found me. That's why I'm glad to be in the service. Just one more time. If the Lord opened doors for you, now would be a good time to tell God thank you. If the Lord been a mother for you, he's been a father for you, he's been company for you, he's been a friend for you, now would be a good time to give God your best praise. You don't mind if I talk about him, do you? You've heard this before, but I just love talking about it. I say this every Sunday morning, but I just love talking about him. He's a rock in a weary land. He's a shelter in a time of storm. He's a friend when you're friendless. Bread when you're hungry. Water when you're thirsty. Y'all know him, don't you? He's Adam's redeemer. You've heard me talk about him. He's Abel's vindicator. He's Abraham's sacrifice. He's Noah's ark. He's Moses' bush on fire. 
He's Joshua's battle axe. He's Gideon's fleece. He's Samson's power. He's David's music. He's Solomon's wisdom. He's Jeremiah's balm in Gilead. He's Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a wheel. Y'all know him, don't you? He's God's only son. He's Mary's baby boy. He's James and Jude's older brother. He's Matthew's king. He's Mark's suffering servant. He's Luke's great physician. He's John's word made flesh. He's Acts coming of the Holy Ghost. He's the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He's the blessed and the only potentate. He's the faithful and the true witness. He's a lily of the valley. He's a rose of Sharon. He's a bright and a morning star. Y'all know him, don't you? I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within. I was sinking to rise no more. But the master, but the master, but the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry from the water from the water from the water he lifted me ah, safe safe am i love love lifting me love lifting me when nothing else nothing else could help love lifting me if love lifted you if God's been good to you and you don't mind testifying if God has made a way for you and you don't care who's looking at you if he picked you up turn you around place your feet on solid ground why don't you grab somebody why don't you shake somebody's hand use your preaching voice say it loud as you can i don't know what you come to do i don't know what you come to do but i've come to lift him up i've come to magnify his name he's worthy yes he is he's worthy he brought me from a mighty long way he picked me up turned me around placed my feet on solid ground do you know him have you tried him say yeah 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 i know he's all right know him for myself he brought me he sought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him what a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and griefs to bear what a privilege it is to carry everything, 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 everything to God in prayer. Why don't you grab somebody? Why don't you hug your neighbor? Tell him everything, carry everything to God in prayer. I know he's all right.
confidence in your flesh. Have no confidence in your flesh. Because the flesh will tell you that you're right when you're wrong. The flesh will make you believe folk are talking about you. And them people just looking in your direction. Your flesh will make you believe stuff that doesn't even make sense. That's why you got to try the spirit. By the spirit. To see whether or not what you believe is of God. 